Welcome to Hamble and to Yachting Monthly's test of the Premier 45. So we'll start as ever at the bow. You see a nice recessed furler there, recessed hark and furler. Get well low. You also see this gorgeous carbon push bit here. You'll see carbon throughout this boat because uh, Premier Composites is the company that makes this boat and they're also the biggest user of composites in the world at the moment. Here's the anchor locker. It's a bit tricky. It's very low profile. Obviously, there's no bow roller because it's in here. You get a halyard down, fish it up, and it folds out. There's all in there. And then back here. There's the windlass, and there's a chain locker there, which has got a kind of rubber coating to cut down the noise. You've also got pegboards, step downs, and it's a big, big sail lock, you see, you keep your Jenica in there. The only other hatch we have on the foredeck is this one here, and it's an escape hatch from the forward cabin. That's, that's kind of a, an RCD requirement. Um, if you wanted to turn it into a hatch, you know, with a flush hatch with the perspex on it, that can be done. So you'll also notice it's got, uh, as well as the carbon stanchions, it's also got these Dyneema lifelines, which is a nice touch. It's also got pad eyes and um, barber hauling attachments here, built into the tow rail. So what there isn't is an actual tow rail, so there's not much to support your feet if you were working on the floor there. It's gorgeous flush hatches that just stretch all the way back. We've got a short jib, jib, uh, jib track here on the coach route. German main sheet system, ducks right off. Likewise, the jib sheets ducked off here. There's a lovely little patch here to absorb any chafe. And you've got the chain plates here, which are built into the top sides. The top sides are laminated together, so the deck is carbon, and the hull is e glass, resin infused, and it's just bonded together and then sanded and fair. So it's got a um, Southern Spars carbon ring, two sets of swept back spreaders, and a fractional sail plan. Easiest way to go with the non overlapping gym. Uh, these are always a nice detail, these little pop-up cleats. So into the cockpit, we've got this great non-slip everywhere, this is really good for stuff. Um, so, we've got two Harkin 50s as a coach roof winches. This one's electric, it's got the main halyard on it. And the other two, so the jib winches and the main sheet winches, they're both Harkin 60s. Uh, lovely detail of where they come out of the deck, it's really, really nice, really clean looking. Uh, down here, this version's got a pop-up table. Thus. But I think one of the drawbacks of this, I mean, it's a very neat idea when it works. But what you haven't got, is because it's such a wide cockpit, there's nothing to brace against. So what they're thinking about, is down below, their table fits on a carbon ring frame. So they're talking about putting one in the cockpit, which would be good for bracing. That would also mean that you can use the saloon table out here in the cockpit. So you've got this lovely uh, recessed main sheet traveller here. Most of the width of the cockpit, I guess it's easy just to set the stride away and treat the traveller if you get a gust. In here, you've got the quadra. So main sense is simple, really easy. So there's your rudder set heading sensor. Got all the chain going in there, simple. You've also got two water fillers for the two half tanks. There's a diesel filler over there. Nicely separated so that if you do get any spills, they stay there. Moving this way, there's a hydraulic control, so again you can sit here steering, winding away at the winch and just tweak the vang and back stay in the outboard. And there's your uh, electronics there in the end of the coving, so you can dial up whatever you want on the repeaters on the miles. Here, that's the jib furling line. Just release that, the tail comes out and put on the jib sheet there. You can't actually reach the jib sheet winches. Minor drawback. If they were electric, then maybe you could have a controller there and just wind them in for you. And here's quite nice. It's the engine controllers. So you've got the that's the self-steering there, that's the um, the autopilot. You've got the engine controls here, you've got the bow thruster there, the little 12 volt there. There's the handle and the throttle. 
Um, what's the city of George's carbon wheels? They, they know their carbon, these people. Um, it's their own system as well. Um, the boat was designed by Bottom and Partners. Um, so it goes very well. But this is the system they've designed for themselves. They make a lot of race boats. They know what they're doing. And this is great. It feels a touch heavy at sea, but otherwise fine. You also see here these gorges have got a profile extension here for the push pin. Very nice. You'll notice forward there's no there are no lockers there because that's all the two aft cabins. So the deck stage is largely here. So we've got the um, asymmetric in there. There's another one on the other side in the aft deck there. And in here is the gas locker. And over here in the lazarette on the other side, quite stiff these lapses. Open this. And in here is the control for the bathing platform. So coming down below, the real nice hand holds here. Here and there, the winches are good on your way out, it's secure. And once you're down here, these are ones the owner specified. Generally you can have ground rails here, but these ones are desperately effective and you will end up messing up the Alcantara here. Anyway, those two handrails, that's quite good for grabbing onto underway, as is this and everywhere else it's pretty secure because you're quite closed in. Amazing disco floor. Watch as the colours change. It looks hopelessly now, but there is a point to it. Because when you get to red, you don't need any lights on at night, you've got your night lights. So you can move around quite freely without ruining your night vision. So here's the night station. Um, not a bad size, we've got the size, there's a little bit of storage in there. There's lots of room back here for books and all that sort of thing. Mac. Fully marinised iMac, it's a solid safe drive, totally marinised, so that lasts forever. It does his navigation here and then when you're in port you can watch your movies and look at pictures and send emails and all that sort of thing. Very clever. Uh, under here, you've got the batteries, domestic battery bank, that's under there, locked in so it can't go anywhere. And it's also in a tray, strapped into a tray so that it's uh, safe from any water. Under here you've got a bit of stowage. This table is very light, there's next to nothing. And it sits on a carbon, carbon bar there. And that's the thing they're talking about replicating in the cockpit. Under here you've got the hydraulics to lift the keel. So with the keel fully down, it's about 2.75, 2.8 metres. With it up, it's only 1.8 metres, which opens up your cruising possibilities. There are buttons to raise and lower it. And when it's raised or lowered, it's secured in place with these locks. So there are holes in the keel, whether it's up or down, lock it in place so it's not going to knock around in its box. So here's the galley, linear galley, all down this side. Um, the drawers here, your pots and pans and so on. Little set them here. Up here, nice little touch. Make yourself an espresso in the morning. That's a push locker because the space is a bit close there. The rest of them are push buttons. So you see some uh, Vinerite and Boss crockery in there. Back right there. Just proper glass with real clever stowage there. There's little uh, metal clips just attached to the top and you slide the base in there. And it holds them whatever way in the string. Force 10, three burner stove there. Uh, it's very much storage on board, very thoughtful, because that's the sort of place, you know, if you open these, you tend to get showered with stuff, whereas these spin lockers out here, very handy and very convenient just to lean across. Eight inch sink here, a little drying sink there, five inches deep. Um, here, that's top access to the fridge, and there, side access. You might notice this is, um, it's only 34 inches high, but if you wanted this higher, if you wanted it four or five inches higher, they can do it. It's a semi-custom builder. Anything you need, they can sort you out. Throughout this boat, maintenance access is really, really good. They've built a lot of race boats in the past, so everything is kind of practical and just works well and it's fairly minimalist, and it lends itself very well to a boat like this. This entire panel comes out, exposing the foot sort of the mast. You can see the mast jack there. It's a whole metro manual hydraulic pump, so you can adjust the mast jack. There's also a plug, so that if you did need to take the mast out, you can just pull the plug, all the electronics are disconnected. Very good for diagnostics as well. Nice touch. Dirty heads here. Um, there's no shower in this one because they only wanted at least one dry head. 
this is the one. So it's got a tap there, um, carbon sink, it's got some stowage out board, uh, a rather marvellous carbon fibre loo. It's not a carbon fibre, it's not coated in anything, it's actually built in carbon fibre. It must be fabulously expensive. Electric flush, uh, salt water flushing. Um, they can put in a fresh water tank so it flushes with fresh water, which smells slightly sweeter, but these are seawater flushing. So some storage under there, mirror there, a couple of hooks around the corner. That's the day heads. So here's uh, the owner's suite, the forward cabin. Very nice. You notice these sort of pillbox windows all the way around. It does let in a lot of light. You've only got this small patch here. As I say, there is that escape hatch there. You could have that first place if you want. Give yourself a bit more light. But these, you could easily just put a rail in there and have uh, you know a blind going around those. But I think you will need it, because otherwise you'll be up with the sun. Uh, some good storage here in these lockers here. Got these both sides. They're hanging on the shelf. There's another little thing locker below it there. Under the berth, a couple of drawers here. Further forward, you've also got the bow thruster under the berth. It's great storage here. Again, very simple, but just hugely effective. There's a nice big space. These nice sort of very lightweight foam, uh, glass covered foam. Uh, you've got these great lights here. So up here, LEDs. And then you've got these great reading lights as well. So uh, that's full brightness, double click, get your red light, double click back to wide, and then just touch it to dim it. And through here is the owner's ensuite. Again, this fabulous, fabulous carbon fiber loo. I've uh, got some storage out here, um, some folks in there, we've got storage under here, another carbon sink, and in here. Is the owner's shower cabinet. Strange latches. Owner's choice. He couldn't find any he liked, so uh, opposite to that. We've got um, in both cabins, there's a washboard. In both cabins, we've got these stools that come out and just sort of collapse down and they work on the dining table just to expand the seating a bit. Um, over here, hanging locker, some more storage out board. There's a little bin storage here, a little storage there. This is engine accessory. You undo this key in this panel comes off and you've got really good access to the uh, side of the engine. Same in the other cabin, which is just a mirror of this one. And back here, there's another panel that opens into the channel between the cabins under the cockpit, where you've got your uh, all the water pumps and that sort of thing. All the technical systems are in there for easy maintenance. Again, easy maintenance is all over this boat. It's built with uh, practicality in mind. So the water tank is under the outboard section of this boat, you can see here, and this bit folds back as has been done in the other cabin, to give you more space for storage for sales and cabinets. So we went out, uh, went sailing in the Australia today, it was a 13 to 14 knot easterly, true wind. Um, upwind, we got about 23 to 25 pound wind angles, very close winded because of those uh, coach roof jib tracks and the nice high aspect jib. Uh, 15 to 18 knots across the deck, and we were making 6.8 to 7.6 knots upwind. Coming down onto a fetch, about 50 to 60 a pound wind angle. And with 16 to 19 across the deck, we were getting 8.5 to 9 knots. Um, the helm feels quite heavy initially, but it does, it becomes more commanding as the speed builds, you feel probably in charge. We did spin out once up wind, but then it's a very, very beamy boat. It's the sort of thing that maybe should have twin runners, but anyway, it's just this big seven foot blade and a single runner. Coming down onto a beam reach with 80 to 90 a pound. Uh, 12 to 16 across the deck, we got 7.8 to 9.3 knots, again, feeling really good at the helm, quite commander. Then uh, we put up the Jenica, which is at 190 metres square, just on the edge of being able to use it, because it's uh, a lightweight one. Uh, and at 95 to 130 degrees of bound wind angle, with 8 to 12 knots, we're making 8.4 to 11.3 knots, and, uh, and having a lot of fun while we're doing it. But who's it for? It's for someone who likes modern design, someone who uh, appreciates a different aesthetic. You can see from the, the kind of slit uh, pillbox windows that it's not your everyday boat. Um, got these four hatches here, so ventilation is good, but in terms of light, it's, you, you see almost the reverse trend of older boats where they're trying to put in different windows. So it's for an individual, it's for someone who likes something different, something who's very keen on practicality and things just working properly as they do on this. Um, 
somebody who likes the carbon loo, and somebody who has uh, friends along now and then, uh, and likes having great fun. It'll be also someone who has uh, £460,000 excluding tax.